Hi everyone, I'm Miranda and welcome to my YouTube channel. I hope you're all having a wonderful start to the week. I'm excited today to share some of my favourite bedside table books with you all. A lot of people ask me about the books that I keep on my bedside table. I love to read in the evenings before I go to sleep and also in the mornings and I want to take you through what books that I love to have by my bed and that I enjoy looking at both last thing at night and first thing in the morning. Before I get into this though, I also just wanted to remind people who are joining in with the Comfort Book Club read this month. February's choice is Miss Bunkle's book by D.E. Stevenson. If you would like to make a, record, a recorded voice message that I can use in the discussion that my mum and I will have about the book on the last, Febu uh, the last Friday in February, I think that's the 25th of February, I will need that message by the 23rd of February. So I will put a link in the description box about how you can record a voice message that will be included in our discussion and it would be lovely to hear from you. So yes, do bear that in mind. But anyway, on to bedside table books. I like a real variety of books on my bedside table. I love poetry, I love nature anthologies, I love some fiction, uh, I love art books and I want to tell you about why I read these books at night or in the morning and which ones I enjoy the most. I've got a lot of books to show you because I want to give you a big list that you can be inspired by and pick out favourites for yourself. So I'm going to break this into a part one and a part two. I'll show you part one today and part two will be on Friday. Okay, so this little book I have by my bedside table all the time. I, I got this last autumn and it's been a firm favourite ever since. I really like to read poetry in the evenings just before I go to sleep. I find it really calms my mind and I love this little volume called Poems for Stillness introduced by Anna Sampson and edited by Gabby Morgan. It's a really charming collection of poetry that is very much intended to help you calm down at the end of the day. It's quite meditative, it's very reflective poetry and I absolutely love this little volume. So I turn to this almost every night. Then I know this looks rather battered but this is a favourite poetry anthology of mine and again it's one I love to have on my bedside table. It's called Another World Than This and it's collected and edited by Vita Sackville West and her husband Harold Nicholson. So this does go season by season, month by month even, through the year. And I love this anthology of poetry because it includes some really quite unusual poems that you don't come across in a lot of other anthologies. So there are unusual choices in this and they're often quite unusual themes they might explore for each month of the year which I enjoy as well but there's always something that when I pick this up and dip into it there's just always a particular line or poem that really seems to call out to me and I just love this collection so though it's second hand I would recommend trying to track down a copy I've spoken before how much I love these Batsford poetry anthologies, a nature poem for every day of the year, and then there's a companion volume, a nature poem for every night of the year. I think if you're just getting into poetry, nature poems in particular are a wonderful place to start. I love nature poems because I love the natural world, I love living in the countryside now, and I love poetry that's inspired by wildlife and by the countryside. So I really would recommend these two anthologies. I think that they're charming and they have so many wonderful poems in these. Now, Batsford recently have done some more anthologies, not poetry, 
but some prose anthologies that I really recommend too. I've just got this one, Nature Writing for Every Day of the Year, that's edited by Jane McMorland Hunter. I love these anthologies that take you day by day through a year. I adore nature writing and this is an anthology I'm really enjoying so far. I think it's very well chosen and put together. And then there's a sort of companion one. It's also edited by Jane McMorland Hunter and it's the bedside companion for gardeners. An anthology of garden writing for every night of the year. And I would say this is very much an anthology for garden lovers, not just gardeners, which is good because I'm not much of a gardener, but I do love gardens. And this isn't full of practical advice for gardeners, nothing at all like that. It really is um, extracts from fiction as well as non-fiction, but they're just lovely things to read. Um, each day of the year and there it's really just full of beautiful descriptions of gardens or particular plants there's some poetry as well in this but I really enjoy this one I think a nature a nature writing for every day of the year follows the seasons perhaps a little bit better um, I think it's hard maybe for descriptions of gardens to always find ones that really match up to the particular season. I mean, it's still very good and there still are some very seasonal extracts that go through the year. But I think my impression so far is that nature writing for every day of the year is a bit better at matching to the season. So if that's important to you, you're trying to decide between the two, then I would probably go for the nature writing one. That would be my personal preference, but they're both really lovely. And then I thought I would also share a bit of fiction that I like to have by my bedside. I like to have very particular types of fiction that I'll read last thing at night. I also like to read a lot of non-fiction, particularly non-fiction that's inspired by nature and the seasons but I'm going to share that with you more in part two. In this part one I want to share some of the fiction um, as well as a little bit of non-fiction that I like to have by my bedside table. So I thought I would take you through some Persephone books that I think make very good bedside table companions. I do like to read short stories at night. Sometimes it's fun to just read a story at night. Um, it's just a very compact way to read a bit of fiction every day. And I would really recommend the Persephone book of short stories. This is volume one. There is now a second volume of Persephone short stories, which I would really recommend too. This one features a lot of the sort of classic type of Persephone author. There's Susan Glaspell, Catherine Mansfield, E.M. Delafield, Dorothy Whipple. Um, there's also Edith Wharton, Dorothy Canfield Fisher. Um, many great female writers um, and a really good collection of short stories. So this is one I definitely would recommend. I've spoken about this Persephone book a lot. It's One Woman's Year by Stella Martin Curry. And this is delightful. It goes month by month through the year. Um, and I just adore the illustrations in this. Absolutely beautiful. So in February, for instance, um, there's <laughs> some little essays one about eggs. Um, there's also picking the first wild daffodils. This comes under the most liked job of the month. And then there's always a sort of least liked or it's the most disliked job of the month for February is buying Friar's Balsam. <laughs> and um, there's a bit about pancakes, making pancakes, of course, for Pancake Day. There's carrying your hobby a stage further. Um, there's a February excursion. There's always a little excursion that's mentioned for each month. 
And then at the back of each chapter, there are always some extracts from other writers, little poems. This one has an extract from Emma in it by Jane Austen. And then it goes on to March. But I love to have this on my bedside table and to read each month um, through the year. I think that this is such a delightful little volume, a real favourite of mine, and I so recommend having this on your bedside table too. Then I do love to read a bit of Virginia Woolf quite often, and I turn to this form of her diary the most. I do have her complete set too, but I really like this edited version that's published by Persephone Books, and it was edited by Leonard Woolf, Virginia Woolf's husband, and it's called A Writer's Diary, being extracts from the diary of Virginia Woolf. So this is a really nice compact edition of extracts from her diary. And again, it's one that's quite nice to just pick up and dip into. You can find the relevant months of the years if you want, or you can just sort of pick it up at random. And it, again, it's just quite a nice companion to have on your bedside table. I also really like to have, this isn't a Persephone book, but I do like to read some essays sometimes as well in the evenings. And I do love The Common Reader. Um, this is volume two, I also have volume one somewhere. And uh, this is a collection of Virginia Woolf's essays. I particularly enjoy Virginia Woolf's non-fiction, her diary entries, her letters, her essays, that type of thing. And I do quite like to read them in the evening. They're the perfect thing to just sort of dip into. And I really love her essays collected in the common reader volumes. So this is something else that I will quite often have on my bedside table. One last Persephone book though, that I think again, is brilliant to have by your bedside and that's Gardner's Nightcap by Muriel Stewart. I love the illustrations in this too. You can see that's lovely. And there's a description of a nightcap that I really enjoy. It says, nightcap, and then to bed to lie with one's face to the uncurtained window thinking of seed sowing and pruning and mulching and slug hunting and this year's done and next year's doings and all the other garden preoccupations that obtrude themselves so pleasantly before a gardener sleeps. Now, this book, I would say, is definitely a bit more for a gardener than just a garden lover. So if you're a gardener or you know who someone who is, then this would be a brilliant gift. It's a perfect thing to have as a gardener's nightcap to dip into last thing at night. It's generally full of little musings, some practical gardening advice, um, reflections on particular types of um, plants, um, subjects that sort of crop up a lot within gardening and gardens. But it's just a fun read. Even if you're not much of a gardener, I still enjoy this one. So another Persephone book I would recommend for your bedside table. And then, like I said, I really enjoy reading essays too. This is a perfect little volume of very short essays. So if you just want something very light and quick to read, last thing at night. This would be perfect. It's Delight by J.B. Priestley. And it's a collection of little essays of his about delights of life, really. So there's an essay, for instance, on detective stories in bed, <laughs> shopping in small places, meeting a friend, um, coming home, romantic recognition, theatre curtains, books and music and furnished houses, walk in pine wood, comic characters, children's games, moments in the morning, orchestras tuning up, lawn tennis, dreams, truth and fiction, cooking picnics, all these things that count as moments of delight, essentially. And I like the illustrations, that come in this volume, it's a really nice little collection. 
and just really fun like I said they're all really very short you can see only a very few pages and it's just nice to have this by your bedside table and to pick it up and maybe feel inspired about some of the small delightful moments in your day as well. I know that this book helps me to be a bit more mindful of the small pleasures in life and I think it's just quite a delightful read in itself so that's a real favourite of mine. And then I mentioned I do like having short stories quite often to read at night and I really do enjoy the British Library crime classics collections. They have a lot of Christmas crime short stories which I always enjoy reading in December but this is one that's great for all the year round and that's Murder by the Book, Mysteries for Bibliophiles, edited by Martin Edwards. This is perfect again if you just want a bit of cosy crime right before bed and it's fun to just read a little story. They're not that long which is also a plus for me because I don't want a short story that could really almost be a novella when I'm reading it just in bed. Um, I like to have short stories that are quite short that I can just enjoy um, pretty quickly. So this is really good for that as well. Not too long, but just fun little mysteries. So really recommend this one. So I shared some Persephone books that I think make great bedside table books. And I wanted to share just a couple slightly foxed books. So Slightly Fox is another independent publishing company that I really like. And I want to share a couple that I like to have on my bedside table. The first one is this book that they just published last autumn. And that's A Countryman's Winter Notebook by Adrian Bell. I do love to read a lot of non-fiction nature, nature writing at bedtime. I just find it's writing that really soothes me and helps me to just calm down a lot um, at the end of the day. It's so nice to maybe make a chamomile tea, curl up in bed with it and read some beautiful prose all about the natural world. And this is a collection of essays all about the countryside. Adrian Bell was a wonderful nature writer. And this is a collection of his winter writings. I'm hoping that Slightly Fox will publish um, Adrian Bell's A Countryman's Notebooks for all through the seasons. I think that they are planning to do more and I really hope that they do. But again, this is such a nice tidy little volume that is perfect for the bedside. There are little illustrations that go through the book as well which I really like. I always love illustrated books so it's always extra special to me if there are some illustrations but yes if you're a nature, if you're a fan of nature writing too then you would really enjoy this. Then a few years ago, Country uh, Slightly Fox put out a Country Doctor's Commonplace book, which I got one Christmas and absolutely adored it. A Commonplace book is something anyone can keep. It's essentially a collection of quotations, um, poems, anecdotes, sayings, dialogue that you overhear anything really, um, but little sort of scraps of writing that you copy out yourself into a book. And there are some really wonderful selections in here, some very, very funny things. Um, it could be extracts from newspapers even, sort of letters to the editor, anything really that sort of just catches your fancy. And I really enjoyed this commonplace book that they put out. Sadly, I don't think it's available anymore, which is such a shame because I loved it. But they did do another one, which I believe is still in print, which is wonderful. And that's An Englishman's Commonplace Book by Roger Hudson. So this is the perfect sort of thing if you're tired and you're not really in the mood to read very much at all or to take a lot in. This is the book that you can just pick up, 
dip it in and out of and maybe find a new favourite quotation or something that just makes you laugh or a couple of lines that make you think or, you know, some lines that you find very beautiful. I love this about commonplace books is that they're just full of all sorts of different things and they're the perfect thing when you don't have a lot of brain power left, you can just pick it up and open it at any page and just start reading and you know it's a real fun one to explore yourself in here there are some quotations and things that are also divided into themes so there's love for instance which might be appropriate for instance to read around valentine's day just to flick through the quotes related to love authors is another theme the gentry russia so you can sort of flick through and find some of the themes or topics that particularly interest you in that moment as well and just enjoy the selected prose. So those are both real favourites of mine. And then what I also really adore is reading children's books at bedtime. If I've had a hard day and I just really need something very soothing and a bit nostalgic and just a real comfort read, then I will often turn to children's fiction. And there's just something so comforting, you know that the it's always going to work out well generally. <laughs> and it's so light and so soothing that after a hard day, I find that a children's book can really help calm me down and get me ready to sleep. Now, I read a lot of books published by Girls Gone By Publishers, which is another independent publishing company, and they republish some of the sort of most collected children's books from the 20th century. So they republish authors like Eleanor and Brent Dyer and her Chalet School series, Malcolm Savile they republish, Lorna Hill, all sorts of authors who were very popular, especially in the first half of the 20th century. I adored these books when I was little and collected a lot of them. And um, now I provide photos for the Girls Gone By Instagram account. So I'm back to reading a lot of the books again and they've been giving me so much comfort and joy lately. I've really enjoyed returning to all of these old childhood favourites of mine. If you're new to Girls Gone By, but you'd like to try a bit of this type of children's fiction, the one I would really recommend is Lorna at Wynyard's by Eleanor and Brent Dyer. This isn't one of the chalet school books, it's a standalone book. There is a sequel to it that sadly isn't in print right now, but this is would be the first one to start with anyway. And I do recommend it. It's such a sweet book. It's about a young girl called Lorna who is a bit spoilt at home and she's been considered um, to be really... Uh, she's described as bumptious and domineering, I think, um, at school in her sort of end of term report, she gets a very bad one. And Lorna's mother is horrified and decides to send Lorna off to go live with her aunt and her cousin in the Cotswolds. And there Lorna enrolls in a day school and she has to really adjust to this new type of school. And there's so much about home life as well as school life in this book that makes it an especially sweet read. Lorna is in fact a lovely character and she gets over her tendency to be a bit full of herself and a bit bossy really very quickly, I think. So for the most part, it's just a very charming book and it's one that I would recommend if you're new to Girls Gone By and you're not sure which one to start with this is a good one because it isn't really coming in in the middle of a series for instance so definitely one I recommend. Then if I've had a really bad day sometimes something like Winnie the Pooh <laughs> is just the sort of perfect ending. I love the Winnie the Pooh stories um, read by Alan Bennett those are just adorable but they are abridged and sometimes I love to read these books as an adult even 
Um, they still are so adorable and I love these editions with the colour illustrations in them. And they just take me back to my childhood and just make you feel like everything is going to be okay. And remind you to not be an Eeyore <laughs> as well. So I just love these. Sometimes when you just want a bit of comfort and cheer at the end of a bad day, then having Winnie the Pooh on your bedside table and having a little read at the end of it is just yeah the perfect way to get over a bad day. So always a favourite of mine. Same with Paddington. A bear called Paddington is the first in the Paddington series and it's another one. They're so funny often too, it's hard not to start laughing when I read a bear called Paddington. It's the same if I might choose like a Just William book too, something like that. Um, childhood favourites that I know and I love really well but that will make me laugh a bit too or just be really comforting and yeah, A Bear Called Paddington does that as well. I love it. And then I always wish that there were more sort of beautiful picture books but for adults. Um, I adore picture books for young children. I used to be a primary school teacher and I just love them for myself even now. The illustrations are often so beautiful and there can be very heartwarming messages in children's picture books too and I think they really can be enjoyed so much by adults as well as children but I wish that you could also find more picture books maybe you know illustrated short stories for adults because what I'll be talking a bit more about in my part two to this video is how much I don't just love to read something lovely at night or in the morning but I also look at a lot of art books and I love to look at art maybe especially in the mornings I find it really inspiring so that's one of the reasons why I love picture books so much and I've pulled out a couple that I think are wonderful reads for adults just as much as children and are really beautifully illustrated um one is The Snow Goose, a very famous story by Paul Gallico, and it's illustrated by Peter Scott. This is very much a story for adults um, as well as for children. And why I love this edition with the Peter Scott illustrations in particular is because of this connection to Elizabeth Jane Howard who, as you know, was the writer of the Cazalet Chronicles and is one of my favourite writers, and she posed for this illustration of the girl in the snow goose. And I just love that. I love that that's Elizabeth Jane Howard. Um, but this is just such a charming story, really all about Dunkirk. And the illustrations throughout are absolutely lovely. So it is really important to me to look at beautiful artwork as well. And I love this little book. And then another one that again I think makes a wonderful story for adults as well as children and is beautifully illustrated is A Note of Explanation by Vita Sackville West. And it's a little tale of secrets and enchantment from Queen Mary's dollhouse. And you have to see these illustrations. They are so very beautiful. It's illustrated by Kate Bailey. There's Queen Mary's dollhouse. And you can see some of these illustrations. I love that. They're just so beautiful, so intricate. And I think these can really be enjoyed by adults just as much as children. And I think it's so important to look 
a beautiful artwork that inspires you. So in my next video, I'll be sharing a lot more of nature books that I like to read month by month or day by day through the year and that are all great to have on your bedside table. And I'm also going to be sharing a few art books because I especially like to look at art books often in the morning over my cup of tea. And I'll, I'll explain why I do that in the next video. But I hope you've enjoyed this one and it's provided some inspiration and I'll see you again on Friday for part two. But thanks so much for watching. Do give this video a thumbs up if you enjoyed it and you can subscribe to my channel by clicking on my face that pops up on the screen over here. But I'll see you again very soon. Goodbye.